Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordine, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Greater Glory. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries. And we've got an awesome word for you today. It is titled to the message is Keep Digging. Ooh. You know, if you have your Bibles, we'd like for you to open up to Genesis 26 today. That's where we're going to be starting out. Amen. Amen. There are some things here that have been on my spirit, and I haven't really felt uh, that it was the timing of the Lord to release them. But this week, through confirmations of the Lord, I felt that it now is the time to deliver this word to the yes. body of Christ. You know, first, we are going to talk about Abraham's and Sarah's long-awaited promise. You know, we are, we're going to talk about Isaac, you know, how, and, and what Isaac had to go through to, you know, for him to, what he had, to, he had to overcome so much, mm -hmm. even though he had all these promises over his life. Yeah. You know, God is faithful to complete the work that he has begun in you. And he is faithful and he is, he's in all of his promises. Every single one of them are yes and amen. That's right. But he never said the journey was going to be uh, easy. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he never said the journey, uh, you know, was going to be, um, like a bed of roses toward our place of fruitfulness, right? right? That's right. Amen. So say it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. Yes, that's right. It's a process and it's <laughs> God's process to change our character and cause us to move forward in the things he has for us. And you will understand that much more as we get into this message. Amen. Amen. You know, this is the same Isaac that finally came into the world once his parents were waxed old. And he is the, he's the one that God asked Abraham to sacrifice, to test Abraham's love and obedience unto him. But now Isaac, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a man and his, his parents have passed on he's gotten older older here in the scriptures we're going to pick up he's he's on his own and he's he's living in a land that is experiencing a famine that's right so we're going to pick up in genesis 26 and we're going to read verses one through six and there was a famine in the land beside that beside the first famine that was in the days of abraham and isaac went unto abimelech king of the philistines unto gerar and the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. And I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. So there is a famine in the land. And by verse 12, verse 12 tells us something very interesting, and it's it's a very powerful thing. Let's take a look. Let's skip down to verse 12. So in verse 12 of, of chapter 26, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. That's a powerful verse right there. Oh. It, says, it says here, in the midst of famine, where there is very little food, very little water and resources to be found. God causes this young man to prosper mm -hmm. and he's blessed and he's got so much favor on him that he's increasing and gaining a hundred times what he sowed. That's right. So let's take a look at that. Verse 13 in the King James says, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. That's right. Now, the New Living Translation says he became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. Continued. Come on. The New King James says the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Now, that's a lot of prospering. Amen. Come on. Amen. So don't we all want to start prospering? 
Amen. Keep on prospering until you are very prosperous. That's right. Come on, that is a good place to say amen. 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 So be it, Lord. <laughs> you know, that is, that's what we all want for our life. The problem is most people want to prosper with minimal investments. Mm. We want a million dollar return on a dollar deposit. Come on. That is why many people that are listening to this message right now are out there playing the lottery. They're playing the numbers. And you can say amen because you're online yeah. right now. Ain't nobody going to hear you, but, uh, but come on. I mean, you know, that's minimal investment and we're wanting a million dollar return. Mm -hmm. and, but Isaac learns something that a lot of people don't know. Let's that's take right. a look at that. Yep. Verse 12 gives us a profound insight. It says, Isaac sowed. Say with me, Isaac sowed. Isaac sowed. Isaac sowed. In fact, Isaac sowed in that land. He sowed right where he was. Some people think that they might have to get to prosperity before we sow, right? Right. That we have to uh, have some extra money before we sow. Come on. <laughs> but you can never get to prosperity unless you sow. You can never reap a harvest unless you sow. That's right. You can never reap a harvest unless you really do something out of a place where you are in need. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to just do it absolutely you know, and maybe you're not in need maybe you you grabbed a hold of this mm -hmm. this principle and you are a sower right amen amen so people show up in the field wanting to rake in a harvest but they have not sown any seeds right right so and sowing doesn't just have to do with money come on it also has to do with your words and your deeds that's right you see we sow the word of god mm -hmm. we sow the word of god in, in, in prophetic decrees right we sow his promises out loud we've talked about that a lot with mm -hmm. high ministries and all, all of our meetings so here here's a side note though this is this is a time that we are going to be reaping what we've been sowing over the past years we we have we have uh, whatever you've been sowing in past seasons is what you're going to reap now. Come on. But, but let's get back on this here because in, in spite of the famine, Isaac sows and reaps. And we can't hold on to what God is telling you to release. You know, if God's saying release that, release, release it. it. Yeah. You know, we are blessed to be a blessing. and We can never Amen. forget that. Come on. You know, do you not know that the best time to sow is in the tough times? It shows God that you trust him and that you know that he's your source and not, and not the things that you can see mm -hmm. in your storehouse. That's not your source. Your source is God. Amen. Amen. So look, God isn't after your money. He, he wants, we want you to know that God is really after your heart and he wants to bless you in the midst of all those that are disobedient to him. Amen. And we are challenging you. If you want to be like Isaac, get the mind of Christ and teach your kids and your grandkids that God is your source. We have to teach them how to sow and plant and not hold on to what that they can see so tightly that they are stopping up their bottle of blessings and, um, and, and they can never get ahead in life. That's right. You know, Isaac here had so much favor with God and was a man that sowed and, and he received a hundredfold blessing. And if you want to, to be like Isaac, that, you know, that it is the mindset that you've got to have is the mind of Christ yeah. in the midst of famine. He reaped that hundredfold blessing. On, it doesn't matter mm. what's going on. If you are in the will of the Lord, you're going to be blessed. That's right. You know, so let, let's, um, let us tell you something. If you, if you, if you will learn how to sow, if you will learn how to plant the word of God, and live by faith by putting your faith into action because you know faith without works is dead that's right Come you've on. got to put that faith in action mm. and um, if you will learn these things there is no one on this earth that will ever be able to stop you mm -hmm. matter of fact it says that that he sowed in, in the in that in that land mm -hmm. and reaped in the same year yep. so you know look at look at the, the the person next to you if you've got someone next to you and say you still have time to sow 
You still have you time still to have, sow some more. You have time to <laughs> go after God's favor Amen. on your life this Come year. On. Amen. Yeah. That's what we want is the favor of God. Mm -hmm. You know, tell yourself, I've, I've got time to reap a harvest this year. I've got time to reap a harvest this year. Amen. So we got to pr position ourselves, position yourselves to prosper this year. Amen. Amen. What does prosperity really come from? It comes from applying God's truth and his principles to your everyday life. Yep. You know, Isaiah 54, 14 says, in righteousness, you shall be established. Mm. You shall be a far, uh, far from oppression, mm -hmm. for you shall not fear and from, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. It's not going to come near you. Come on. We put on his righteousness, his, his righteousness by putting on his right choices. That's right. You know, his will. What is his his laws, his principles, and then we put on his will and his ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. That is how we're established in this life. Yeah. This is the first point of our message today. You will reap the reward of respecting God's word, his rules. Here it is. You will reap what you've sown. Mm. So Isaac found himself in a place where everyone else was struggling and nothing was going right. And he becomes prosperous. That's right. You know, this ministry is blessed because we're sowing people, right? We don't eat our seed. We sow it into others by finding new ways to carry the gospel to the world. Hightower Ministries puts the resources to work to reach the world. And we are always believing God Amen. for more fruit that remains on the vine, more souls to be saved, more people receiving healing and deliverance. God has told us that we would be the ones to train up people all over the world to be like Jesus. And we believe him. Amen. Amen. You know why God is blessing those that support High Tower Ministries? It's because this ministry is serious about advancing the kingdom of God. That's Come right. On. Amen. Right. Matter of fact, 10% of what you give to this ministry gets tied to our apostolic covering, and the 90% gets put to use to pay the ministry bills to keep this ministry growing and expanding our reach to the lost. Amen. So God is blessing because we are all sowers in yep. High Tower Ministries, and we are planters, yep. giving ourselves uh, you know, you know, you know, to the, the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. So you should give yourself a little hand clap if you're sowing in the High Tower Ministries, and you're part Amen. of this ministry, Hallelujah. because you're partnering with a ministry That's right. that is really doing the work of God. Come on. While others are struggling, this ministry is increasing. Yep. Amen. Amen. But here's the point number two that we want to make. When you start prospering, somebody is go not going to like it. Yep. So when, when you realize, you, you so you've got to realize the, um, the repercussions of rejection. Mm. You know, here is what you need to know. When you prosper, other people are not going to like you. Come on. Verses 13 and 14 say, the man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds, and a great number of servants come on. So the Philistines envied him. They sure did. And see, see, they were looking at him and saying, why is he getting so blessed? And why are we struggling? Mm -hmm. Why is he prospering? And why are we hungry and, and so poor? Yeah. You know, I don't know who I'm preaching to today or who Bill's preaching to today, but you have been in a place where you don't understand why people are trying are trying to stop you mm. and have rejected you. You have tried to include them, but they just put their nose up to you. You don't understand why they don't like you and they mock you behind your back. Some have even plotted against you. But God wants you to understand that he is prospering you. Come and on. you've been upset and freaking out because people started hating you. Mm. And you're going to have some haters when That's God right. starts blessing you. God said, God said, remind you, know, remind you today and remind all of us today that when these things begin to start happening, you know, you are rejected. You know, when you're being rejected for no obvious reason, it's really a sign that you have God's unlimited favor upon your life. Some of you are, be, are beginning to recognize recognize that no one in your circles are particularly excited about all the things that God is doing in your life. 
jealousy is going to crop up mm -hmm. because God's favor on your life will cause jealousy in others around you. It's just, it just comes with the territory. Yep. And it's usually in those that are very uh, spiritually immature mm -hmm. or, or have backslidden into some things. Right. 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 So, so don't be upset. Don't be shocked when somebody uh, that you, you, that used to like you all of a sudden don't like you anymore. <laughs> People don't like to see you blessed sometimes. Why? Because they, it makes them feel like, you know, they, they, they kind of feel like, oh, I'm better than them. You know, I look better than them or I, I maybe I'm more qualified. I'm more qualified than they are that, you know, they think they're smarter and they think that they, that, you know, that they, they should have the things that you have, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's just some people that just have entitlement issues, but that we're not going to go there today because that's a whole nother sermon for another day Come on. because we have some real problems with that in our day and time and entitlement issues. Amen. Yeah. You know, so hallelujah. So that they think that they are better than you and uh, they try to figure out how you got blessed while they did it. Mm -hmm. So why are you being re rewarded? And, and, and they think, you know, why are you, why are you getting that? And I'm not being rewarded. Mm -hmm. So why are you prospering? And they are not right? On, right. So they think they have so much on you, but what they don't seem, seem to realize and understand is that favor is not always fair. Mm -hmm. We, you know, do we have any witnesses out there? Favor is not always fair. That's right. God doesn't choose the smartest. God doesn't choose the best looking, the most gifted. God doesn't choose the most experienced, most talented. God looks at the heart as the measure of a man mm. or a woman. Amen. That's right. And of mankind, he chooses those that have the trust, your trust in him and, and they obey him at his word, you know, with that childlike faith. Yeah. And when he sees and finds someone that is willing to obey his word and his leading quick to quick to obey his leading. Amen. Mm -hmm. He then smears his favor all over them. Come on. Look, Woo, then that's exactly what we're, we're talking about here. We want the favor of God Come on, smear smeared me, all Lord. over us. <laughs> Amen. You know, anointed means yeah. smear. Amen. Right? He's smearing the fav his mm. favor all over you when he anoints you. Yeah. You know, you know do, uh, does anybody else want that? I, I mean, I want more and more of God's favor. Amen. 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 That's what we should be striving for is to be the apple of his eye. Yeah. And you know what? Those that obey him and, and, and love him like that, they are the apple of his eye. Yeah, that's right. So don't be shocked or upset or surprised, you know, it, because it goes with the territory mm -hmm. to have some of these things happen. Yeah. Matter of fact, the scriptures say that the Philistines were so envious of Isaac that they stopped up his well. That's right. Yep. They did everything they could to find out where the source of his blessings were and tried to stop him. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need to understand that people are going to try to stop your favor with God. They're going to try to get you fired from your job. It, they're going to, they're going to start lying about you, bring mm. up false accusations about you. They're going to, they're going to try to throw dirt in your well, mm. and mm. they're going to be throwing dirt and throwing dirt in your well with their words and their actions. But matter of fact, you will, you will even be in your well, sometimes drinking of the pure water of the Lord, the water of God's spirit. And you're feasting on that fresh manna that God is giving you. And he's giving, you're sitting there in your well and you're taking it in. And look, when, when it, all of a sudden they, you start getting dirt thrown on dirt, you, here comes right? the dirt. Mm -hmm. when, when they throw dirt on you, just shake it off yeah. and step up, Come just on. shake it off and forgive them. Yeah. Forgive them to, you know, forgiving them helps God to give you further favor. Mm -hmm. Just step up because, you know, you are in that perfect will of God. You know, you're right where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So as you are, keep shaking it off, all the words or anything that people are throwing at you and, and, and that, that, that dirt is going to hit the ground. That's right. And they, they don't realize that every time with every shovel of dirt that they're throwing at you, that they're actually helping you to elevate <laughs> higher and higher Come and on. higher. Because as you choose not to retaliate against them and you choose to forgive and keep blessing them and keep loving them, God just puts more favor on you That's right. and establishes you more and more and more. He causes you to prosper. Mm -hmm. Secret enemies happen when God elevates you. But know this, 
The word says, Psalms 23, 5, thou preparest a table before my, in in the presence Mm. of my enemies Mm. and anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Amen. It, it, you, you know, it used to bother me when people would try to get me fired from my job and and try to do things out there. And when I was working with, with uh, that company that I worked with, you know, it, it, it it used to bother me, but you know what? Things just roll right over into the ministry too, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it doesn't bother me anymore. It doesn't bother me because these people are actually helping you to elevate Mm -hmm. because you've learned how to shake it off. You learn how to forgive quickly and step on top of it all. And then God, he just brings you higher and higher. Yeah. You know, we're nice people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have people say things and do things. I think we're pretty nice. But we're nice people. We don't throw mud pies at anybody. and. We are not busy bodies. We know how to keep our mouth shut. We know how to keep our mouth <laughs> shut, you know, and um, and uh, we're just busy about our father's business and yeah. doing our best to stay in our lane. Yeah. And, and that's a good advice for everyone. Mm-hmm. Be busy about what God has called you to do and stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and Amen. stay in your lane and uh, be quick to forgive, you know, because, you know, we're, we're giving people. But, you know, people are going to do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's usually because of jealousy. That's right. Amen. So you know, we've got to recognize that people will do that. Yeah. So we're we're not, you know, when you think about it, we're not the best preachers out nope. there. We're not the, the the youngest, most hip preachers nope. out there that are, uh, going on. you know, nope. <laughs> we, but you know what? God's blessing us. We're not even the most qualified yet. Mm-hmm. God has smeared his unlimited favor mm-hmm. upon us yeah. and he gives us revelation yeah. when we spend time at his feet. Yeah. We spend time in his presence and it blows people's minds because that's really how God gives you that revelation mm-hmm. is that intimate time with him. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of you are, are, you know, are about to embark on great exploits for the Lord exposition, exposition positions that you didn't really think that, that you'd ever be able to do. Right. And then right. they are bigger than you ever dreamed or imagined. And you're about to go to places that you never thought that God would take you. Mm-hmm. God is about to take you higher and higher with him. And, um, and, and you are not the most qualified in the natural, but with God, it is not about who seems to be the most qualified with God. The question is, who has God chosen for such a time as this? That's right. Say, I've been chosen for this time. I've been chosen for this time. Amen. So, you know, if people can laugh at you. They can laugh at me, reject me, stub their noses. Amen. You know, they can criticize us. They can throw us out. But they cannot stop what God has assigned for our lives. That's right. Now, listen, people are going to try to stop you and by stopping up your well. Mm-hmm. But the word says that the Philistines had stopped up all the wells. That's right. Let's take us get back on this here. So Genesis 26, <laughs> verse 15 goes on to say, for all the wells, which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. My goodness. Here's the funny thing. They stopped up his wells, but he still kept on prospering. <laughs> they talked, they'll talk about you, but you're still going to be promoted. That's right. Because all promotion comes from the Lord. Yep. God will make your boss promote you and, and, and not even understand why he's doing it or That's, why she's doing it. That's good. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now the king, the king sends them away. The king sends Isaac away next. So verse 16 says, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Now, you know God is favoring you when the king has to ask you to move, right? (laughs) Right. Now, now here's point number three. (laughs) So let's look at this uh, verse 17, Genesis 26, 17. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. The next point is that you have to learn how to relocate and redig. Come on. Some of you are trying to hold on to things so tightly and trying to to stay at a particular job, and and they're you know they want to fire you. They it, maybe they have fired you and you've talked your way back into the job. They don't really want you there. You know mm-hmm. they you know they they're they're trying you're trying to hold on and fight for something, and people don't really want to work with you. So let it go. 
God's got something better for you. Amen. Relocate and redig. Mm. You don't have to hold on to an area that will not embrace you. Sell your house and move to where you're going to prosper. Amen. And it is better to be around people that celebrate what God is doing in your life than to be around a bunch of people that are just tolerating you. Sometimes God will allow you to go through some circum certain circumstances and situations because you keep, you know, you keep saying, why do I have to keep going through this? Why does that, you know, why does this keep happening to me? Mm -hmm. But God is, is trying to get something that, that you're holding on to for you to release it. He's trying to get you to release it. And he's trying to get you to shake free from some mindsets that, are, that you know, he doesn't want you to take those mindsets into your next place of fruitfulness. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want you to carry a bunch of baggage into your next season. Come on. To so say, lighten the load. Lighten the load. Let's, let's, you know, let, we got to let it go. Come on. Got to let it go. So Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants you to leave some stuff behind. Yes. The you know the word says that that he departed and pinched his tent in Gerar. That's right. Amen. So verse 18 says Isaac digged again. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Whatever God is putting, putting your hands to do, he's going to bless it. Whatever you do as you are following the Lord's leading, he will put his favor upon you and you are going to prosper. Amen. So now you have to see this right here. Verse 19. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Springing water. Hallelujah. Not just still water but some running water. Did you hear that? Amen. Verse 20 tells us what to expect here. It says, and the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek because they strove with him. So since they can't stop you from getting, from getting water, mm -hmm. they've, they've been throwing dirt and your wells didn't work. Now they're going to try to claim it's theirs. Come on. You know, get prepared for some, you know, that God has given ideas and he's really prospering you and growing you mm -hmm. in, in certain things. Get prepared for someone is going to try to claim what you've done as theirs. Mm -hmm. Someone will try to steal your projects and, and claim your ideas uh, because they haven't gotten any ideas from the Lord for themselves. They don't know how to hear God yeah. and they haven't been pressed into God for themselves to get something from the Lord. That's right. So they will try to take the fruit of God's blessing and say that they did it. Mm. They will try to put their name on your projects. Come on. Verse 21 says, and they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of that Sitna. Okay. So they, they ha he had to dig another well, mm -hmm. another well. So you must have perseverance to get the kingdom call done. That which God has called you to do, that which God has des destined for your life and your purpose, God is going to put his favor on what you put your hands to do so that you can keep prospering. Mm -hmm. So keep on moving forward. Keep on digging. Amen? Amen. Verse 22 says that he moved from there and he digged another well. Mm -hmm. Keep on digging. Don't Come stop. On. You know, it, it is the 11th hour here. We're all in, we're in the end times. We cannot stop. God is going to get you to where he wants you to be. Amen. And that's right. So don't get frustrated. Don't let people stop you because of unforgiveness. Don't let that unforgiveness tie you all up just because they put you down, just because they don't accept you. Keep on digging. Keep on pressing into God. Keep on following the Lord's leading. No one's going to be able to stop you. You've got God's favor on you. Come on. Verse 22. Let's read that. It says, and he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of that Rehoboth. And he said. For now the Lord hath made room for us, hallelujah, and we shall be fruitful in the land. God is about to bring you into a place where you will be able, uh, well, you're not going to have as much striving really to fit in anymore. There's not going to be any more tears. God is about to bring you into a place that's, that's got your name on it. It's your inheritance. And you had to go through all that digging, all those other wells, 
all those prior wells because you had to go through his processes to get to a place of trust in him, mm -hmm. to trusting in that you are knowing when you are hearing his voice mm -hmm. and him proving you that you will obey him and follow him, believe him when others are, are set against you or, or what he's doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And then all of all of this causes spiritual growth. God also uses all of this to purge you and to clean you out from self motives mm -hmm. and, and fleshly things, wrong attitudes about yourself and others. You know, that these things are not things that God wants you to be bringing into your next place of fruitfulness. And when you get settled, God's going to bring you to this place where you get settled. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Come on. When you get settled, no devil in hell can stop you from obtaining what God has for you. Yeah. You are about to get settled into a place that has your name on it. God settled Isaac, a place called Rehoboth, and which means plenty of room. Come on. Plenty of room. Plenty of room. Plenty of room to grow. Hallelujah. Plenty of room to do the work of the Lord. Mm. Plenty of room to prosper. Plenty of room to grow in your job, wherever mm. God has you prospering. Amen. Amen. So they can't stop you. They can't take your, your name off of it. They can't claim that they did it. Mm. It's yours. Amen. Amen. So thank God I'm redigging. Mm. Say, I'm, thank God I am relocated. Thank God thank, I'm relocated. Thank God we're doing all that God has called us to do. Yeah. Amen. They can hate on you, mm. but they can't stop you. Come on. We speak life over you today. Yes. We speak prosperity over you yes. today. We speak victory over you today. You are the head and not the tail. Mm. You are absolutely above only. Mm. And you are the victor and not a victim. Come on. Increases coming to you. Increases coming to your family. Amen. Yes. Amen. Then we just want to praise him today. Because mm. when you think about all that he, the doors that God has opened mm. to us. Amen. All of us. When you think about how God has spoken over and over again to you to us amen to amen. Yeah. hallelujah when we think about how the spirit of the lord has led us through the fire yes. and helped us to yes. get out over onto the other side there is a praise that has developed mm. within you and within us that no one can stop and this this is a fire in our bellies and it's mm. going to burn hotter and hotter and hotter hallelujah yes. you know and, and you know through it all we're still here. Amen. And then we need to praise him because yes. we're still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. The devil may have said, you know, no one's getting out of this alive, but we're still here. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. He, uh, he's our way maker. Yes. He makes a way out when everybody thinks that, oh, we got him now. Mm. You know, God will make a way for you. Amen. Blessed and wonderful is his name. Ooh. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Now we're going to, we're going to leave you with a warning. The last part of this message, we're going to leave you with a warning. And you've got to grab a hold of this because no one with a religious spirit will ever preach this. No, they won't. Especially if they're using their government, governing offices to manipulate others. Mm. So we're going to teach you something that you rarely hear. Some of you will be tested if you will have the courage to follow and obey the Lord's voice, voice when someone else that seems to be more seasoned than the Lord tells you not to trust in what God has told you to do. Mm. The decision not only you know, the, the decision not to obey could cost you everything. Come on. So let's look at this in first Kings chapter 13. We're going to start in verse 11 and go through verse 15. It says, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, and the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, what way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Okay, so this is like an older a prophet. This is the, an older prophet. You know, it, it's it's like um, 
it's like anyone really that's has been in the ministry longer, maybe, or a seasoned person that's been in the ministry a long time, and you're hearing God and you know how to hear his voice, but they're saying, come back and sit in this church and take in more word and drink in more of, of the Lord's spirit and abandon what God has called you to do. Abandon what God has told you. Just sit here and eat and drink with me. Come on. And the younger prophet said in verse 16 and 17, and he said that I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt not eat bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. Then the old prophet lied and manipulated the young prophet. And don't, don't, uh, don't think this doesn't happen in our day and, mm. and, and, and under, you know, in, in, with religious spirits, people that are driven by religious spirits or worse in the house of the Lord. Come the on. older prophet said, well, verse 18, he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Why do you suppose, you know, was the principal thing behind this older prophet lying to him? It was because he did not really believe that the younger prophet could hear the voice of the Lord for himself. And he was willing to turn him astray from the Lord to feel like he had su superiority. Mm -hmm. You know, with no regard for the consequences of this young prophet not fulfilling his assignment before the Lord. Yeah. And in this story, the young prophet hearkened to the older prophet above the voice of the Lord. Come on. So we're going to start back again in verse 19 and read through verse 32. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread, and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him in the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass nor torn the ass. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he said his carcass, I mean, and he laid his carcass in his own grave. And they mourned over him saying, alas, my brother. And it came to pass after he had buried him and he spake to his son saying, when I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar of Bethel and against all the house of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. So when you know how to hear the voice of the Lord, and it is sure, it's a sure word, and God has confirmed his word of a surety, mm. obey the Lord at all costs. Your disobedience could cost you everything. Mm. In this story, it cost him his life. And all the old prophet had to say in so many words was, he was a real prophet after all. I guess he really could hear, hear the voice of the Lord. Come on. That's all he really had to say. Mm. Come on. What a shame. 
What a shame. And in a time when God is promoting those that have been, that have been in, that haven't been in the mainstream of things, mm -hmm. make sure that you do not get intimidated by others when you are moving forward to carry out your assignments before the Lord. Not everyone will have the discernment to know what God is calling you to That's do. Right. Don't hesitate to say no when you need to say no. Don't hesitate to say yes when you need to say yes and to move when God says move. Mm -hmm. Don't sit still when God says keep on going. Always obey. Deal with those that don't understand later. They may get it or they may they may not get it. And you must learn that that's okay. Be okay with that. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Because all that really matters are you are obeying God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh, what a word. Amen. Come on. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Father, Please. we just thank you for this word today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are bringing forth such revelation. Lord Father, new things to us, Lord God. You're igniting fire in us today. Holy Ghost fire, mm. Lord God. Turn up the temperature in our bellies, Lord Father, that we would go forth with power and with might. And Lord God, that we would be steadfast and unshakable and unmovable, Lord God. Not intimidated, Lord Father, but moving forth as warring light lions that are crowned for your glory. Lord Father, help us, Lord God. Help us with all that we have to do. We bless your holy name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us here at High Tower Ministries International for our Greater Glory broadcast. And we hope the show has edified and encouraged you in the Lord. Please reach out to us and share your comments with us. And if you have any personal prayer requests, please send them to prayer requests at HightowerMinistry.org. Get connected by registering with us on our website and receive a free download that will really be a blessing to you. You'll get it in your inbox and you can share it with others. It's about salvation and the law of our identification, why we must be saved. And uh, and become a partner with High Tower Ministries. Be prayerfully become a partner with us. You can uh, you can be a, become a, a partner, a monthly partner with us right on our website, or you can uh, give a one-time donation to help this ministry. Amen. Look us up on YouTube and subscribe. Hit that bell. And uh, just remember, we have broadcasts that go out four times a week right here on Facebook. Look for our Greater Glory Prophetic Teaching every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And that's all Eastern Standard Time. And Testimony Tuesdays, each and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. That's a show that we have a lot of guests on. And, yes. uh, and we really, it's a its a wonderful live broadcast. Make sure you get on with that. You'll learn so much. We have some great topics and uh, and the Lord really brings forth a prophetic wonderful word. Wonderful testimonies. And great Amen. testimonies. So you can also find us on Charisma. Search us at High Tower Ministries Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Audible, cpnshows.com, or wherever you listen to your podcast. We invite you to like and follow us on Facebook so you don't miss a show. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to share this with your friends. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the High Tower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for High Tower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.